I'm, I'm very honored to be here uh, to represent the federal government in, uh, in saying congratulations for your uh, uh, for running purple and and in the service to the nation. But I got to ask, you know, you got to be asking yourself, why are we here? I mean, we usually don't decommission machines; we commission them. Uh, but everybody, I think, knows the answer to that, and the answer is because this was the machine that we put together, and it was a 10-year uh, quest to, to provide this capability for the nation. And it marks the end of an era of uh, achieving what we set out to achieve, but the opening of an era for the future and the ASCII vision for predicting with confidence the performance of the stockpile. So I guess in a sense you can say uh, the purple machine took the eye out of ASCII. Going forward, there is no eye in ASCII. Remember that. The, many of you here at, were here at the very beginning, I know. Uh, I see some of those faces. In the very beginning, the nation asked Livermore and the Tri-Lab to put together a program that uh, we could use to maintain our nuclear deterrent while, in, while we weren't doing nuclear testing anymore. Uh, folks rose to that occasion. Uh, they suggested the stockpile stewardship program, the science-based stockpile stewardship program that was underwritten by simulation. And they put a marker on the map and said, by 2004, we will build a machine, a 100 teraflop class machine that will enable us to do 3D predictive high fidelity, not predictive, sorry, high fidelity simulations so that uh, we can prove that, that parallel computing at this scale can actually uh, further the science of the stockpile. So that was the unbelievable goal uh, people here underwrote and then committed to, to go towards. Uh, Livermore uh, partnered with IBM and, and ultimately produced the machine we call Purple, and, and that's why we're here today. But if you can think back for a second, for you know, over a decade and a half, well, for le in less than a decade and a half, we went from the point where we had a concept for what we could do for the nation to actually producing that and going even further. Uh, I can remember in the old days, in the good old days of ASCII, we would buy machines, serial number one machines, and we'd rotate them between the labs. And we'd use them to do our capacity computing at each of the labs. That's how we used them. It was, uh, at the time, that's how you had to use them. So, I mean, I'm not denigrating that. That's, that's the way we had to do it at the beginning of the program. But once we got to purple, that was the first time we had the opportunity to say, we're going to use this machine to do the most demanding science that we need to do to prove the principle that we can do 3D calculations highly parallel and get answers that converge that we can believe in. And that's the, the legacy of purple, and that's what we tried to, to go forward for. I'd also... Uh, I'd also try to, I'd also say that uh, this machine, if, if you look at the, the folks that decided we were going to go embark on this, uh, this journey, they said that, uh, well, I, I suspect they never said, and it wasn't part of our vision, uh, that this machine could be used to become the third leg of science. If you think about it for a minute, in the beginning, uh, Nobody had the audacity to stand up and say, we can change the way science is done. We can, simulation can be on an equal footing with theory and experiment in doing science. But the purple machine came. Uh, you guys, the tri-labs used that to do science. And with, soon after purple came online, you'd hear the science and engineering community actually say that the third leg of science has arrived. That's a huge accomplishment, one that I don't think was ever uh, planned in the beginning, but one that you can be proud of. I'm going to thank Livermore for stepping up and being the, the lab that not only pulled this together for the benefit of this lab, but for the benefit of the program and the nation as a whole. Uh, you've operated this in a tri-lab sense, and I personally want to thank you for that. It's been, uh, it's been a position of leadership that I hope uh, others can replicate as we go forward with predictive capability. Uh, Furthermore, I'd say you've picked a, uh, a good partner, IBM, over the years uh, from the purple day, from the bl blue days, get my colors right, blue through white through purple and on uh, through blue jean and sequoia in that line. Of, uh, there's a great partnership that's been forged. I will say it hasn't always been easy, as I understand, uh, but then relationships that are strong are forged under fire. So uh, I believe that it's stronger now than it was in the beginning. Uh, it reminds me of the quote, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, 
uh, it's time to get going because Sequoia is not going to be a, <laughs> a slam dunk in exascale. Uh, the future is something we need, uh, the kind of leadership we saw in Purple to pull off. So I want to thank uh, the team of Livermore and, and IBM for pulling that together. I'd also say that, uh, you know, it took a, a diverse community of government, the tri-labs, industry, and academia uh, to really realize the 100 teraflop dream and the dream for predictive or for, for proving that you can do science at, at the 100 teraflop scale. But it took the leadership of Livermore and IBM to actually produce a machine that proved that we could do that. So uh, I want to thank you for that. I, I would say that as we close this chapter of history with the with the purple machine and we progress to the future vision of ASC for predicting that with confidence the performance of the stockpile that uh, that this is this is the way we want to do that uh, thanks for kicking down the door uh, for the future and, uh, and I appreciate the time to come and share with you uh,